Um, so my, my, oh, there it is. Okay. My project is called Lucrezia Marinella, Archangela Terabati and Artemisia Gentileschi, Diverging Social Spheres, Diverging Feminisms in Early Modern Italy. Um, and hopefully everyone isn't now just seeing my notes. <laughs> um, man, I really thought this would go easier. Okay. Technical difficulties. Okay, well, I'm just gonna start talking. So over the last two quarters, I've studied feminism in early modern Italy, specifically through the writings and paintings of three women who lived from around 1600 to 1650. Um, Artemisia Gentileschi, the famous Baroque painter, and her self-portrait is gonna load at some point. Um, she was a famous Baroque painter. Each of them lived from around 1600 to 1650. On the top left, there is Lucrezia Marinella. She was a wealthy woman who wrote inside all day, and she wrote a lot of feminist fiction and one feminist manifesto called The Nobility and Excellence of Women. And on the bottom left, there's Arcangela Terabati, who was a nun who didn't like being a nun. Um, and she wrote the book Paternal Tyranny. Okay, I think I have my notes up. Okay, got it. Okay. I originally became interested in this topic when I was lucky enough to see some of Artemisia's paintings in real life during my study abroad in Italy. I took these photos in the museums myself, which explains why they're blurry and terrible. The one on the right is her most famous painting, and it was so awe-inspiring that I took a postcard of it home and have it framed on my desk now. When I originally started this project, I wanted to study her life and her feminism. Um, it was only several months after I proposed the topic in my honors application that I realized that Artemisia wasn't the only feminist in 17th century Italy, and she may not have even been the most exciting one. Their feminisms, plural, were very different from each other, such that three women, despite all wanting gender equality in a time when feminists were far and few between, would not have gotten along whatsoever. So I set out to answer the following question. How did these three women's social spheres develop into their feminisms? Lucrezia Marinella was a wealthy woman who stayed inside all day. Angela Terabati was an unhappy nun, and Artemisia Gentileschi was an extraordinarily successful female painter. Their lifestyles, habits, and behaviors, and their social networks were so different that it makes sense that their approaches to feminism, even if they were all ultimately radical enough to see women as equals or in some cases superior to men, were extremely different. My overall goal was and is to paint a clearer picture of what feminism looked like at the time and place and to study and compare these extraordinary women who are seriously underrepresented in history. In my research, I first tracked down and closely read biographical information on all three women, Second, I read Marinella's most famous text, The Nobility and Excellence of Women and the Defects and Vices of Men, which is on the left. Her 1600 Feminist Manifesto, which as the title suggests, is about why women are perfect and superior to men and who are just awful. In the middle, there's Terabati's most famous text, Paternal Tyranny, which criticizes the common practice at the time of fathers forcing their daughters to become nuns to avoid paying for dowries, which she herself experienced as an 11-year-old, and upwards of 50% of all patrician women experienced that in Venice at the time. For Artemisia, I read several art historian discussions of her most famous paintings and supplemented those with my own analysis of the paintings. In doing these, I accidentally developed my main method of comparison. Both Marinella and Terabati cite long lists of famous women with positive traits to prove their point that all women are great because they have those traits. They used a lot of the same sources for those famous women's biographies or fictitious stories, so there are many women icons that both of them discuss with the same sources but to prove entirely different points. What's more, all of Artemisia's most famous paintings are a famous women icon, so there's significant overlap between the women icons each of them discusses. I was able to find quotes from Marinella and Terabati and paintings from Artemisia representing the Roman mytho-history character Lucretia and the Egyptian pharaoh Cleopatra. Terabati and Artemisia both represent Judith, the biblical heroine, and Marinella and Artemisia both represent Cariska, a female character in a contemporary play. I analyzed all four of those. I'm only going to be talking about Lucretia in this PowerPoint. So, um, Lucretia Marinella, this is a quote of hers that kind of sums up her feminism pretty well. She lived from 1571 to 1653. She spent her entire life in Venice. She was born into a family of doctors and therefore moderate wealth. She was unusually educated for a woman of her generation, and she quickly became a fixture of humanist writing circles and was respected by everyone she came across. Her most explicit claim in nobility and excellence is fairly problematic. It's that women are beautiful and chaste and virgins, and men are ugly and corrupt, and therefore women are better than men. When she approaches women icons, she highlights their traits of purity and chastity. 
For example, she mentioned several women who kill themselves to avoid being raped in order to stay pure and that they should be respected as opposed to any of their actual independent actions they took before that. Archangela Terabati, this is one of her quotes that sums up her feminism pretty well. She was born in Venice in 1604 and died in Venice in 1652. She published five books in her lifetime and two posthumously, each explicitly criticizing misogynist practices in politics, the church, and society more broadly. Eternal Tyranny, her most famous book, covers many topics relevant in feminist debate at the time, like whether women had the right to education or were even part of the human species altogether. But primarily, she's fighting what she calls paternal tyranny, wealthy men who send their daughters away to convents to save money. Her arguments, in the same way that Marinella's can be boiled down to women equal virgins equals good, can be boiled down to women are independent and should be treated as such. Artemisia Gentileschi is the most well-known today of the three women, and she's growing in popularity too. After centuries of being more or less ignored, she was granted her first solo exhibition in an internationally known gallery with an exhibit in the British National Gallery last year titled Artemisia, not to mention a Google Doodle on her birthday last year. She lived from 1593 to around 1651, living in Rome, Florence, Venice, London, and Naples in her lifetime. She was then and is today best known for her femme forte paintings, dramatic depictions of famous women in history and mythology. This makes comparison to Marinella and Terabati easy. Her paintings compared to those of her male contemporaries like Caravaggio, so I have her Judith Slaying Holofernes in 1613 on the right, and Caravaggio's Judith Slaying Holofernes in 1602 on the left. You can see that in both cases Judith is beautiful, but on the right she's much more active and has agency and she's like the blood is spurting out of Holofernes neck and onto her dress and skin. Whereas on the left, Caravaggio, who was actually infamous for his violent paintings, has Judith daintily holding a sword at someone's neck and looks terrified of what's going on. They're both beautiful, and that is unusual for the feminist writers because Marinella and Terabati desexualize their women to emphasize their agency, and male painters like Caravaggio sacrifice her agency to make her sexualized. One of Artemisia's most radical feminist statements is that women can be both beautiful and assertive. The four women icons I analyzed in my thesis are Lucretia, Cleopatra, Judith, and Cariska. For this presentation, I'm only discussing Lucretia. She was an important character in Roman mytho history. She may or may not have actually existed, but she was known as an honorable Roman noblewoman who was raped by the son of the king. The day after the rape, she told her father and husband what happened and told them to take revenge for her and then stabbed herself. The event kicked off the war that led to Rome becoming a republic. Marinella's quote on the top right references her solely as a woman of honor and chastity, which follows her usual argument. Terabati, whose quote is on the bottom right, uses Lucretia for an entirely different purpose to talk about men's cruelty. On the left, you see Artemisia's representation of the exact same character and story. The first thing you notice is Lucretia staring angrily and intensely up at the top of the painting while holding a dagger to her exposed breast. The light and shadows make the scene super dramatic, and she looks determined as if she knows the action she's about to take matters. It started a whole war and a new political system altogether. She doesn't look like a victim, but rather someone who's about to take revenge. The three feminists took the same pic figure and presented her to further their completely different arguments. Marinella uses Lucretia as an example of a chaste woman, Terabati uses her as a victim of men's cruelty, and Artemisia uses her as an agent of change. So as for my conclusion and directions for further research, um, at a basic level, these stories are exciting and have been really inspiring to read, plus really fun for me to share. But this research has broader implications. First of all, it refutes the assumption that feminism is or ever has been monolithic. Even when feminism wasn't a recognizable term yet, we can see that women who advocated for women's rights, respect, and independence had extraordinarily different priorities and ideals. Second, the women I've studied from a sociological lens are rarely studied together. When they are, it's from a purely historical lens, art history, feminist art history, literary history, instead of a primarily sociological one. While I've ended up leaning more into the humanities direction of the research than I really intended to, I didn't end up including Marx or Bourdieu in my analysis like I intended to. It has still led to me connecting social milieu to feminist discourse in ways that I haven't seen reflected in the literature. If I had more time, I would love to study the work of the artists and writers that I have on this slide. Or on this slide. Um, on the right, there's Modera Tifante and Sara Copio Solum, which also overlapped with Terabati and Marinella in Venice at the same time or the Bolognese painter, painters Elisabetta Sirani and Lavinia Fontana, who overlapped with Artemisia. 
These stories of the women need, still need to be explored. Marinella, Terabati, and Artemisia are only a small part of the many feminisms that existed in early modern, er, er, excuse me, early modern Italy. That is my presentation. I would love to hear your feedback.